I call this meeting of the Williamsburg James City County School Board to order. Can I please have a motion to certify closed session. Uh, I certify that to the best of each member's knowledge, the Williamsburg James City County School Board, while in closed session, discussed only public business matters lawfully exempted from open <coughs> meeting requirements as stated in Virginia law, and that only such public matters as were identified in the motion convening the closed meeting were heard, discussed, or considered. Second. Second. Discussion? Those are what you call the roll, please. Ms. Hummel. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Mrs. Taylor. Aye. Mrs. Young. Aye. Dr. Beers. Here. Ms. Cook. Aye. <laughs> Motion passes. Uh, the school board will collectively lead all of us in the Pledge of Allegiance this evening. <laughs> Our Pledge of Allegiance is to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Sir, sir, will you please call the roll? Dr. Beers. Aye. <laughs> Ms. Hummel. Here. Mr. Kelly. Here. Mrs. Taylor. Here. Mrs. Young. Here. Ms. Cook. Here. Um, I'd like to note that we are all missing Ms. Ombi today, and she is in our thoughts, uh, and she and her family are in our thoughts this evening. <clears throat> can I please have a motion, or Mr. Kelly, can I have a motion to approve the agenda, please? Yes, ma'am. Madam Chair, I move approval of the, of the agenda as presented with the exception of um, moving 8.01, readoption of stu standard operating procedures, to 9.02, uh, taking it out of the action items and putting it into the discussion. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Can I have a second, please? Second. Any discussion? Mr. Sosa, will you call the roll, please? Mrs. Taylor. Aye. Mrs. Young. Aye. Dr. Beers. Aye. Ms. Hummel. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Ms. Cook. Aye. Agenda passes. The next item is 4.01 announcements and superintendent's report. Dr. Heron. Good evening, Madam Chair. We are pleased to announce that Williamsburg James City County Public Schools and five individual WJCC schools earned 2017 Virginia Ind Index of Performance Awards for Advanced Learning and Achievement. The VIP incentive program recognizes individual schools and school divisions that exceed state and federal accountability standards and achieve goals established by the Governor and the Virginia Board of Education. Jamestown High School and Matoga Elementary School earned Board of Education Excellence Award for meeting all state and federal accountability benchmarks and making significant progress towards goals for increased student achievement and expanded educational learning opportunities set by the Virginia Board of Education. Williamsburg James City County Schools as a division merited recognition too, along with DJ Montague Elementary, Lois Hornsby Middle School, Stonehouse Elementary, and they all merited school recognition by earning the Board of Education Distinguished Achievement Awards. This award recognizes divisions in schools for meeting all state and federal benchmarks and making progress towards the goals of the Governor and the Virginia Board of Education. Congratulations to Jamestown High School, Matoga Elementary, DJ Montague Elementary, Lois Hornsby Middle School, and Stonehouse Elementary School, and to the division as a whole for those accomplishments. Today, the state released the Standards of Learning test results for 2016-17 school year. Statewide, scores remain relatively flat with small improvements in reading in grades 4, 6, and 8. In WJCC, our pass rates in all five categories, English, reading, writing, history, math, and science, continued to exceed state averages by one to three percentage points. Overall pass rates in the five categories did decrease by one to three percentage points. However, overall pass rates do range from 82 to 87%. The pass rates of our English language learner students decreased most significantly in history and science. We have not achieved a significant reduction in the gap between the pass rates of our white and black students. 
and the pass rates of our special education students declined from last year. We have a lot to be proud of, but we also have a lot of work to do to ensure that all students achieve their full potential. We will provide the board and the community with a more in-depth analysis of SOL results in October and the purposeful steps and interventions we are already taking to positively impact the achievement of all students on the SOLs and other measures of student performance. It is also important to note that while the state did not release accreditation ratings today, all WJC schools remain fully accredited for this year. And one reminder, families, if you've not yet registered your child for school, which starts 21 days from today, please call or visit your zone school for more information. These are all of the announcements I have this evening, Madam Chair. Thank you, Dr. Heron. Are there any other announcements from school board members? If not, the next item on the agenda is 5.01 <coughs> board recognitions, but if I understand correctly, we do not have any of those this evening. That's correct, Madam Chair. We will move <coughs> on to citizens' comments. Um, we have four speaker, five speaker cards this evening. Ms. Hummel. Uh, this is the time when citizens who have submitted speaker cards are invited to address the board. Speakers are asked to come to the podium when their names are called, state their name for the record, and direct their comments to the chair of the board. Each speaker is allocated three minutes. Time cannot be yielded to another speaker. Personnel matters are not discussed in open school board meetings, and we ask that you refrain from making reference to specific individuals. The board is interested in hearing all comments fully and requests that citizens refrain from verbal outbursts, applause, or any other type of demonstration. Although the board does not respond to comments at this time, please know that we are listening and we appreciate your time. Thank you for adhering to these guidelines. Madam Chair, my directions are concluded. Peg Borman, please. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Madam Chairman, for allowing me to speak this evening. Uh, I am Peg Borman. I live at 17 Settlers Lane in James City County. I am the chair of the James City Clean County Commission, and I have come here tonight to let you know that we have become a part of a new initiative, which is Keep America Beautiful. It is now Keep James City County Beautiful along with us. Uh, so we have a larger group of volunteers that are working with us. And with them, we have identified some goals that we want to work with and build on what we have presented to you in the past with litter prevention and recycling. Uh, we have been in the past few years to uh, all of the schools and presented our mission in educating the um, students about the importance of litter prevention and recycling. We've met with janitorial staffs and others in the green, on the green teams in the schools. We um, want to, uh, oh, I'll get nervous here in a minute. Uh, we feel that teachers could receive a little stipend to supplement them for their time. We could have a more effective and a sustainable program. They have to do um, the recycling and the litter prevention programs on their own time. And if we could just get each principal um, from the, each of the schools to work with us on this and have a staff member who is, cares about the program that we're trying to get across, it would be a much more successful program. Um, it is our role as a Clean County Commission to teach the citizens of James City to be clean and reduce our trash. So we start with the children because you know it takes a village to raise the children. And we have to, we start with the children, they can go home and hold their parents accountable for the recycling because I found that um, I have great grandchildren in school now. All my grandchildren are grown. So, um, but I noticed when the children hold the parents accountable for recycling, it gets done. Sometimes the parents get a little loosey-goosey about it. So uh, if we could teach them in the schools about the importance of recycling and, and we could attain our zero tolerance of waste, then perhaps we would um, have the opportunity in these formidable years to make it better when they get to be grandparents like me. 
uh, we, we want to um, get within the James City's um, comprehensive plan for 2035 of that zero tolerance of waste. So we have to set our expectations pretty high at this point. And we have resources available. We have volunteers who are willing to work in the schools. Ms. Borman, thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Alexa Provost. Hello, I'm Alexa Provost. I am a member of the James City County Clean County Commission. So to elaborate on what Peg has said, uh, the Clean County Commission has presented to and worked with the school board uh, before, but since then we've recruited some new volunteers and we feel as though we have uh, a new focus and a fresh energy. Um, so as a group, we have identified some areas in which we uh, feel we can really increase awareness and um, promote recycling within the community, one of those areas being uh, WJC schools. So we've worked with the green team staff members before and other faculty, and generally speaking, everyone has been on board with these ideas. Uh, but we really believe that uh, to make lasting uh, change, these efforts need to be really implemented and enforced by our principals down through school administration. Um, I feel this community is, is very blessed to have um, champions like Richard Ambler at Jamestown and Lisa Crowder at uh, Berkeley and um, Lori Hudson at Stonehouse that consistently go above and beyond to make recycling education a staple in their classroom culture. But uh, even the appointed green, uh, green team staff members are spread really thin. They're educators. They wear a ton of different hats. So we had the idea of suggesting, um, as Peg mentioned, maybe even a stipend to compensate them for the extra time and effort that it, it really takes to make a measurable impact. Um, as a commission, we also have additional resources that we can offer, like multiple grants that we have access to through hrgreen.org, um, learning tools to incorporate recycling education into SOLs, um, even fun things like field day activities, you know, recycling relays, workshops, things of that nature. So um, I guess ultimately our request would be that the board would consider um, appointing a, a point of contact or a liaison within the schools that can function as a, a primary partner to the Clean County Commission so we can really implement some of these new and hopefully fun uh, initiatives in the school. Thank you. Thank you. Beth Hall. Good evening. Um, to my paper here, I would like to tell you about an important historical event that happened in Prince Edward County, Farmville, Virginia, about two hours from here. In 1951, a young student, Barbara Johns, attended Robert Rosa Moten High School for black students. Barbara observed that her public school was separate but unequal for black students. At 16 years old, Barbara Johns led a movement at her high school for students to strike, asking for equal schools. As a result of the strikes from 1959 to 1964, Prince Edward County closed their public schools to avoid integration. The actions of this brave student seeded the court case known as Brown versus the Board of Education in 1954. Notably, 75% of the plaintiffs on that um, important uh, case came from Prince Edward County. A lot of people don't know that, but that's really significant. This landmark Supreme Court decision desegregating U.S. schools. The Moton School has been turned into an incredible museum. I believe Smithsonian quality and the Education Center, which is a national historic landmark. It interprets the history of civil rights and education, specifically as it relates to Prince Edward County and the leading role its citizens played in American transitions from segregation toward integration. The Virginia General Assembly passed a Senate Joint Resolution 340 designating tw April 23rd as Barbara Johns Day across the Commonwealth of Virginia beginning in 2018, as well as the introduction of the federal legislation to make April 23rd Barbara Johns Day nationwide. After visiting the museum, I thought more people should hear about this important story. 
As, member, as a member of the All Together group here in town, which you all are familiar with, I organized a field trip to this museum, which inspired me to think that our students need to see this wonderful place. With the support of All Together, and I hope many other organizations and groups in this town, I hope to see this annual trip to the Moton for our students in WJCC's school system. Two years ago, I approached several department heads to see how to create an annual field trip for one uh, whole grade to visit the Moton Museum. After sharing this history um, of this amazing museum, I received positive responses from these um, department heads, which promoted them to explore how they could make this an important um, destination. Uh, they had a, uh, um, an intern was assigned to the job and created a curriculum for eighth grade to align with the SOLs. Ms. This Hall? field trip would add the content and um, just two more sentences. Thank you, Ms. Hall. It, to how the students. Up. Thank you. I know, but I didn't, I neglected to write on there that I needed more time. So can I just give you the last three? You've, you've allowed it to other people. So I just. Let me just say it. How students are taught civil rights that could create a content for teachers to teach about this history. The groundwork has been laid, and now I'm asking for your support for a date to be committed for this momentous, um, for the momentum for this to start, for this important educational opportunity for the group, for our community. Thank you. Dana Middleton. Good evening, and thank you for the opportunity to speak. My name is Danan Middleton. I am a military veteran. I am an eight-year veteran of the public classroom. I have a master's degree from George Washington University, an MBA from Liberty University, and currently am a candidate for a postgraduate degree in education. Most importantly, I am a teacher. I would like to speak to you today about Mr. Middleton, please direct your comments our to teachers. the chair. Thank you. According to James Livingston, President of the Virginia Education Association, within five years, 50% of our teachers in the Commonwealth will be eligible for retirement. In that time, our projected enrollment at WJCC is slated to be, again, 5% more, compounding the potential loss. The image is clear. More students, fewer teachers. The image is made more relevant by a demographic inequity in our schools. We have a growing student body, increasing in diversity, yet our faculty look less and less like our students. And despite the numerous awards for excellence in the classroom, our teachers are not paid what they are worth. Virginia ranks 45th in teacher pay when compared to college graduate peers earning just 66 cents on the dollar. It is worse here. Our teachers make even less than that, and it has to do with more than just state funding. For instance, a teacher at Bruton High School can expect to earn about $100,000 more over the course of a career than his counterpart across the way at Warhill. Or a brand new teacher with a master's degree at Phoebus High School will make over $12,000 more in her first five years teaching than she would at Jamestown. Topping off the state of affairs is low teacher morale. For some, it's an issue with coworkers or administrators. Others, it's just an imbalance of pay versus responsibility. For many, they just want to be heard and respected. Regardless of these concerns, our teachers soldier on. What are we doing to keep them? What are we doing to recruit new teachers? What are we doing to attract teachers that look like our students? It is not good enough to give select teachers raises that only offset VRS requirements. It is not good enough to hold up your hand and vote no on what will undoubtedly be an unpopular stance, only to watch it pass anyway. The current state of our teachers is simple. It is not good enough. If we are sincere in our respect and appreciation of teachers, prove it. Pay them well, place them at the decision table, and provide them the professional autonomy that they have earned. My name is Danan Middleton, and I am a teacher. Thank you. Richard Chu. Hello, my name is Richard Chu. I'm a resident of James City County, and I rise here today uh, on the issue of school redistricting. 
Now, this is an issue I don't believe will actually affect my family directly, given my proximity to one of the high schools and the fact that I live very distant from the others. But I rise here rather for two other reasons. One is the idea of redistricting has changed essentially from an issue of overcrowding to one based on equalizing the percentage of free and reduced lunch students across the high schools. And in looking at the numbers, I was surprised to find that this seeks to fix a problem that apparently doesn't exist and will actually create the very problem it's supposedly trying to remedy. I feel as though I have something to say on this because I've been an educator for 22 years. The last 14 of which have been in a historically black college where half the students come from twice the poverty line or lower, and nearly all of them need financial aid in order to succeed. In other words, I've taught thousands of students who actually qualified as freed and reduced lunch students when they were in high school. They succeeded and they went on to college. Now studies insist that if in fact you've got schools that have varying differences between free and reduced lunch rates, that graduation and college rates should in fact be affected by that. But that doesn't seem to be the case with Williamsburg James City County schools. Graduation rates are within a point or two of each other across the schools. Completion rates are almost identical. And between 51 and 55% of our students are going on to college, according to the Virginia Gazette. The secret isn't hard to find. And this is coming from the words of my own students, is that the secret to their success in terms of getting to college was teachers who cared. Now, in academics speak, that means individualized attention and independent pedagogical intervention. Now, how does one actually achieve that? It happens not when you've got parents nagging teachers to hold their feet to the fire, which was in fact a comment in the last word in the Gazette recently, but rather when you have relatively small class sizes where teachers are able to provide pedagogical adjustments to specific students. That's why my own institution mandates the first year courses in English and math are capped to 30 students and no more. If in fact you move to redistrict now, Lafayette is at 88% capacity. If, in fact, you equalize everything across the board, you've got to move 91 students out of Lafayette, 76 to Jamestown, 15 to Warhill, who are free and reduced lunch. Ultimately, that's going to require 261 students to be moved out of Jamestown into um, Lafayette, and that's if the numbers are perfect. In all likelihood, that won't be the case. Now, when you do that, the school system as a whole is at 96% capacity last year, and there's probably more now which means that you're gonna overcrowd the classrooms, provide the teachers with less opportunity for individualized intervention, and actually see achievement go down for the very students that you're actually trying to help. We have overcapacity at one school. You redistrict, you'll have overcapacity at three schools, and it'll be over 100% in just a couple of years. Thank you. That brings us to the consent agenda. Item 7.01, approval of the minutes from the following meetings, um, June 20, 20th, uh, 2017, uh, July 11th, 2017, and August 1st, 2017. 7.02, financial report and monthly bills and payroll, July 2017. 7.03, personnel actions. 7.04, <clears throat> retire policy EEAA, walkers and riders. 7.05, Retire Policy EE, Transportation Services Management. 7.06, Adopt VSBA Policy EEA, Student Transportation Services. 7.07, .07, Adopt Policy EEAB, School Bus Scheduling and Routing. 7.08, Revise Policy GCBDA, Sick Leave Bank. 7.09, Revise Policy IGAJ, Driver Education. 7.10, Revise Policy EEAC, School Bus Maintenance and Rename School Vehicle Safety Program. May I have a motion, please? Madam Chair, I move that we um, approve the uh, consent agenda as read. Second, please. Second. Any discussion? Call the roll, Ms. Serza. Dr. Beers. Aye. Ms. Hummel? Aye. <coughs> Mr. Kelly? Aye. Mrs. Taylor? Aye. Mrs. Young? Aye. Ms. Cook? Aye. Consent agenda passes. That brings us to the new action item 8.01, authorization to permit city county use of school buses. We discussed this um, item at um, our uh, last meetings. May I have a motion, please? Madam Chair, I move for approval. Second? Second. 
May, are there any questions for staff? Seconded. Will you call the roll, please? Ms. Hummel. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Mrs. Taylor. Aye. Mrs. Young. Aye. Dr. Beers. Aye. Ms. Cook. Aye. Motion passes. Item 8.02, adoption of fiscal year 2019 budget calendar. Can I have a motion, please? Madam Chair, I move that we approve the fiscal year 2019 budget calendar. Second? Second. Second. Moved and seconded. We made some changes based on at the, our discussion at the work session. So, Dr. Heron, do you want to? Yes, Madam Chair. I'm going to ask Ms. Burdett, our Chief Financial Officer, to provide the changes in the budget calendar. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board, Dr. Heron. Uh, based on feedback from the board members at our last uh, work session, we did add two dates. The first being in March, on March 27th of 2018, for approval of the school board adopted budget. Um, if that's necessary, if we don't feel like we're in a good place by March 20th, we do have that additional date for you. Additionally, uh, following the county and city approval of their budget, we have added May 22nd as a tentative date uh, for adoption of our final fiscal year 2019 budget for you in the event that we need that additional time to approve. Um, and just a reminder that um, I am in constant contact with the city and county and will provide you updates related to their budget process. Um, they start a little bit later than we do. We have to begin our process a lot earlier to funnel into their budget. But as I find information out, I will certainly share that with you. Thank you, Ms. Berta. Are there any questions? We appreciate your good work. Thank you. Thank you. All the roll, please. Mrs. Young. Aye. Dr. Beers. Aye. Ms. Hummel. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Mrs. Taylor. Aye. Ms. Cook. Aye. The budget calendar passes. That brings us to item 9.01, presentation of communications audit report. Dr. Heron. Thank you, Madam Chair. In May and June of this year, we invited Hunter Communications to conduct an audit of our external and internal communications. I want to publicly thank families, community members, and WJC staff for taking the time to fill out the communication survey and participate in the focus groups. Feedback on how we do business is vital to making us better at what we do. This evening, Ms. Barbara Hunter, President of Hunter Communications, is here to present the results of the communications audit to the school board and the community. Ms. Hunter is an expert in school communication. She has served as Director of Communications for Alexandra City Public Schools and, and as an Assistant Superintendent of Communications and Community Outreach for Fairfax County Schools. Uh, she's an expert in her field, and we're excited to have Ms. Hunter here this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Heron, so much. Madam Chair, school board members, thank you uh, for allowing me to have some time today to present the results of the communication audit, uh, all of uh, whom you participated in uh, this audit report. So it's exciting to be with you again um, this evening. Um, I think the timing for such an examination is really critical as you have a new superintendent and um, that's often when districts undertake these kinds of communication audits. I've done um, several audits around the country um, in varying size districts and so um, what you're going to hear tonight are similar challenges that districts face um, and some unique aspects to uh, your school division as well. I also really want to reflect um, and commend um, Betsy Overcamp-Smith um, for uh, the scrutiny of the program, the communications program, because it really takes courage um, to have that kind of scrutiny to, to look at. And I really commend um, both Betsy and Dr. Heron for their proactive leadership in this area. So the communications audit um, had several goals, and um, namely, uh, we came in to uh, conduct a comprehensive analysis to identify strengths, which you're going to hear uh, the strengths tonight, as well as opportunities for improvement. We'll go through those tonight as well. And then based on that examination and analysis, make recommendations, um, which is really based uh, on best practices. Um, we, um, my colleague, Kathy O'Hara, um, who is not with us tonight, uh, and I um, 
both um, have our accreditation in public relations and um, we're very familiar with the National School Public Relations Association rubrics of practice that we use to reflect on best practices. Um, and we'll talk about those um, in a little bit. The methodology, I wanted to spend just a little time on the methodology to help you understand how the audit was carried out. And it really had three components, as you can see. We um, took an analysis and really assessed the current practices of um, what is happening um, here in WJCC, print, digital, social media, and news media um, among them. Then we also conducted a scope survey, uh, Dr. Heron alluded to that uh, in her remarks, that um, surveyed three audiences, parents, employees, and community. And um, we'll go through some high-level results of that in a minute. And then we, uh, so that was our quantitative piece of the um, audit. And then we took a look at our focus groups. We ran 10 focus groups, really got some um, really solid qualitative uh, feedback around um, some very critical questions relating to communications. And we conducted um, several personal interviews as well. So uh, the survey that we used is unique um, in the marketplace, and it uh, really stands for the School Communication Performance Evaluation. And this is a survey that is aligned to NSPRA's rubrics of best practices and suggested measures. Um, this is um, a document that lays out um, what emerging <laughs> school communication programs look like, what established school communication programs look like and what exemplary communications programs look like. And so with that, we can get a sense of taking a look at those rubrics where WJCC falls. Uh, we conducted the survey during the uh, two-week time period, both in English and Spanish, and we were really pleased with the participation rate. Um, as you can see there, uh, we try to, uh, we always encourage districts to go for uh, between a 3 to 4 percent margin of error. Um, and you certainly succeeded with your staff, faculty, parents, and families. Community is so uh, challenging to uh, get a high participation rate, um, but we were really still pleased with, with, um, with that participation rate. Um, of all the scope data, and there is um, a lot of survey data um, that we sifted through and analyzed, we thought this probably was one of the most um, informative. Um, and I just want to orient you to the slide. Um, you have staff, parents, and community survey results. Uh, it was on a Likert scale of uh, 1 to 5, as you can see, um, 1 being poor, 5 being excellent. Uh, the red bar stands for satisfaction with communication overall. And as you can compare those red bars, you see the staff, um, we have a lot of opportunities for improvement around um, staff perceptions and staff satisfaction with communication. Uh, the blue bar um, is the ratings for perception of the district based on the communication that these target audiences receive. So as you can see, again, um, staff and community, we have some uh, real opportunities for growth. Um, and then finally, the gray bar it represents the district reputation uh, as a factor to live and work here. Um, your parents uh, are, was uh, really the most positive group um, on the scope survey, and in general they felt most positively about the communications they receive. So let's talk about some strengths that we uncovered um, as part of our triangulation of this data. Um, clearly, uh, you're a high-performing school division. You're only one of 53 school systems um, in the Commonwealth where all schools are fully accredited, and it sounds like you're going to continue that, um, that great accomplishment. Uh, the school division has done a good job tailoring programs to meet a wide variety of student needs. Focus group participants were uh, very excited about um, naming those programs, including the Elementary International Baccalaureate School, Bright Beginnings, uh, Pathways Project, Link 5, Concourse 9. So um, the focus group participants were very aware of these uh, programs. There's defi definitely a sense of optimism about new leadership here, um, and that really came through in our, um, in our focus group discussions. Um, Dr. Heron's positive demeanor and organizational changes um, were very 
um, positively reflected on, and um, also was uh, punctuated particularly with employees with a corresponding sense of expectation. So yay, this is a great new start, now let's keep moving forward. The success of uh, WJCC has contributed to its steady growth. We felt that the reputation um, of the school division is a key reason for your continued student population growth. Parents feel that schools and teachers do a really good job communicating with them. Um, that's not to say that there are some areas that we're going to discuss in a minute um, about where we can make some improvements, but um, overall parents feel pretty positive about it. Um, on the scope survey, parents highly rated communication from their child's school, uh, especially in the areas of understanding and accuracy, um, and also rated highly timeliness, openness, transparency, and trustworthiness of school level communications. Continuing on with some more strengths, um, and because there are many, all three groups, parents and families, employees and community members, reported that they were able to understand and easily recognize the communication they received from the school division. And that really speaks to the fact that these communication pieces are well written and they're well branded. And so they're easily understandable and easily recognizable, which is very good. Uh, in our review, we noted that the school system has consistency in its electronic communication program, which means um, it's readily uh, evident that this is come, this WJCC comes across as um, a system of schools, right? Um, a school systems, I'm sorry, rather than a system of schools. And so um, your consistency of templates across your schools uh, really help to do that. The Twitter and Facebook channels are timely, up to date, and highly visual. And we particularly like um, the engaging strategy that offers visitors to the website um, the ability to share social uh, these those items on their own social media channels. Uh, we also want to uh, reflect on another strength, that there is a comprehensive plan that exists for division-wide communication efforts. And um, this plan, as we saw, was grounded in the ENSPRA, Rubrics of Practice, which is uh, research-based, which is um, excellent. And so we wanted to make a note of that. Also, that um, focus groups responded that they felt that uh, WJCC performs well in the area of crisis communications. Um, all school board members, senior staff, and principals expressed a high level of confidence in uh, the crisis communications plan and is a major strength of the director. And then there is also a strong desire to connect with the community and vice versa. Um, we know that you have a community engagement coordinator and a committed education foundation which, who are all hard at work and their efforts are uh, very apparent. So those are the strengths that we identified. And now we want to move to opportunities for improvement. Um, the first, in terms of internal communication strategies, um, is probably the most um, evident one that we saw, that um, these strategies and tools are really needed to ensure that employees are well informed about the priorities, programs, and successes of the school division. Your school employees are really ambassadors for the school division, so it's really critical that they're informed, uh, that they're engaged, and they feel that um, they can really represent your school division when talking to folks at the grocery store or at the swimming pool. Um, and so we uh, believe that a proactive internal uh, communications program will provide them with the skills and information that they need uh, to share the good news and key messages of the school system. Uh, the second opportunity for improvement was um, uh, also connected to that. A, a consistent need was cited across all audiences, but especially for employees, uh, for more consistent and frequent two-way communication opportunities. Um, again, there was a lot of excitement about the leadership transition uh, currently underway, but the uh, employees were really, really adamant about the need for, um, for some um, official and consistent and frequent two-way communication between central office and employees. District level parent communications, we noted, um, need to be consistent and more frequent. 
Um, while parents noted the understandability and recognizability of school district communications when they receive them, um, they expressed a clear need to have more of these and um, have them consistently delivered to them. We also noted um, that the standard of standardization of expectations is needed for teacher level communication about student progress. This is um, not um, an unusual challenge that districts face. Um, parents just generally ex expressed a need for all teachers to use the same tool, which they um, cited as parent view, as well as to keep their teacher web pages updated. Um, parents expressed frustration um, in focus groups with inconsistency among the teachers using this tool and keeping their portals up to date. Um, and so um, you have a great tool to use. Now, uh, now you need to take the next step to um, ensure that it's used consistently by all teachers. The next opportunity for improvement is um, we felt that there are some opportunities to more proactively communicate with key audiences through the local news media. Um, you know, local news media is kind of a double-edged sword, um, but they have a job to do, and they, um, their job is to present both sides of issues. Um, and so it's very important for WJC to be uh, really uh, out there, um, really positive with a, with a lot of news stories. And we have a key recommendation that will follow that will help um, create more good news stories out in the local news media. We also noted, you're, and this is, you know, um, it, you know not, not a news flash, your, your, your district is diverse and growing. And so that, all, that resulted in some mixed perceptions in focus groups, particularly among community members. Um, that they noted that at, while as a whole the division is successful academically, there are student subgroups that they know are struggling. Um, and so they, they, the focus groups struggled a lot with this, particularly, again, your community. Um, some believe that the greatest challenge the division faces is serving um, English language learners, uh, while others noted that it's achieving equity among the schools. And we know um, your focus group participants also noted there's a recognition. You, the work is ongoing in this area, um, and, um, and, and they also noted your commitment to that work to keep it, to keep it going. Um, the other, uh, another opportunity for improvement, there is a perceived lack of pr responsiveness by the central office and schools, noted by all three groups, and that was apparent on the scope surveys as well as in focus groups. Um, many parents took the time to express their concern about the lack of responsiveness that they perceived um, on the part of teachers uh, and, and some principals, and then principals also shared that lack of responses from the central office, and then the community shared that from, um, from individual school and schools and overall information. So um, that was um, kind of a consistent pattern that we saw throughout. Um, and again, there was an acknowledgement of the top leadership transition taking place and um, hopeful that responsiveness from the central office will improve. Also, there is a varying impact of the division's strategic plan on employees' work. And what we found is um, the closer to the classroom um, the focus group participants were, the less impact they could see of the strategic plan on their work. Um, so that is clearly an opportunity for improvement. And then finally, um, all three audiences uh, rank low the school division website and social media as preferred methods of communication. Now, social media is not really a surprise because I do see that in other districts um, that um, we still may be in the early adoption phase of social media in our school divisions. Some communities really love it and use it. Um, most communities don't really depend on it. Um, there are certain groups, you know, uh, individuals who really like social media, and it's great. It's one tool in, in the toolbox. Um, but the division website, as you can see, we, we made some recommendations for improvements in that. So those are our opportunities for improvement. So as you can see, this is really kind of a deep analysis, and we, we really dug deep in this. So there are 14 recommendations, and um, I'm going to move quickly through those, and then we can um, have an opportunity to discuss uh, anything that... Um, you would like to at the at the conclusion. I also want to point out that 
these are 14 recommendations, not meant to be uh, implemented all at once, certainly. Um, these are uh, looked at, uh, should be looked at over the course of um, the next three years um, because some of them do require some resource commitment. But um, we just wanted to make sure that they were um, noted. Um, there's, um, however, the first one is developing a highly structured internal communications program that informs engaged employees. Um, both my colleague and I felt that that was really critically important this year. Um, and in fact, um, there will be a senior staff retreat on Thursday where um, that will be the topic of a deep conversation. And there is a um, little saying in school PR, go in-house before you go out-house. Because you want to make sure your employees are, they know what's happening first uh, before they read about it in the newspaper or hear about it uh, from, a, from a parent um, who got the news before they did. Um, I will. Uh, a workforce that is really well informed and has opportunities to ask questions and express concerns will really be your cadre of ambassadors, which is so important. Um, in each of these recommendations, we did note a lot of strategies and tactics that I won't spend a lot of time on tonight. Um, but um, there are a lot of ideas in here, uh, one of which um, is um, having an internal newsletter. Um, which is, would be excellent to start the uh, information flow to employees. Uh, the second recommendation is creating proactive strategies to regularly inform and engage community members. So um, there is research, polling research, that shows when citizens are informed about what's happening in a school district, they are more readily um, and wanting to support the school system, which can pay off in great dividends um, when you are trying to uh, get some uh, consensus on community issues uh, and uh, instituting changes. Tra it can translate to more funding support, volunteerism, and stronger partnerships. Uh, we also wanted to um, recommend examining the community engagement function in the Department of Public Relations and uh, Community Engagement. So we know at, at present the engagement efforts are underway with your local agencies, and, um, but we also noted that awareness of these efforts, um, at least among some focus group participants, seem to be low. So we made a recommendation to increase that awareness through a number of strategies and tactics uh, and some, with some more collaboration with additional agencies um, to push that information out and to provide more programming. Also, along with this, um, we had some great um, focus group participants in the community group, some of whom were retired, and were very, very thoughtful about um, the school division. And um, there, there's just one quote that I wanted to share with you. Uh, a gentleman said, I have some friends who are retired, and uh, they're great people with great insights, but you can't come into the schools if they don't want you to come. So there's uh, also an acknowledgement that there needs to be some more receptivity um, and more structure around a volunteer program. And so for that, we are recommending um, designating a staff member at each of the schools as a partnership volunteer coordinator, someone who's already on staff, um, and that those individuals be awarded a stipend for their efforts. Um, and that the community engagement coordinator uh, be tasked with developing a formal program, job description, and expectations um, to receive the stipend to really welcome the community into the schools and really make that great connection uh, because your community really wants to be uh, involved. Uh, the fourth recommendation is to develop and implement a plan to give the community a more comprehensive understanding of Dr. Heron's immediate and long-range priorities. Um, again, timing is perfect um, for the community to get reacquainted with her in her new role. And um, so we had some suggestions as to um, what she can do to do that including a series of small group conversations um, out in the community, um, presentations by um, uh, connecting with her on local radio and TV talk shows, and even perhaps hosting a State of the Schools event for the community. Um, the fifth recommendation is improving the timeliness of division and school level responses to questions, concerns, and suggestions expressed by parents and community members. Again, this is an issue that we're going to be tackling on Thursday at the senior staff retreat. Um, so we're really going to be drilling down on that, particularly um, what will be the process and expectations for responding to questions and concerns and suggestions, 
at both central office level and school level, and um, equally important, what is going to be the accountability measures to ensure that that it gets done? The sixth recommendation um, is uh, setting expectations and standards for teacher entry of student progress and parent view. So as I said, this is a familiar challenge in many school districts. Um, you have this great tool. Um, it takes time to use it. Uh, it might take a culture shift to use it. Um, you may have early adopters using it and very excited about it, and you may have some lag. Uh, teachers, lagging teachers, um, not wanting to embrace um, this tool. But if you're going to have it for parents and set the expectation um, for parents that it's going to be used, um, then there, there's frustration among parents when it's not used. Um, so we think that conversation would be really important to have. Also, uh, to help Betsy get the good news out, we recommend establishing a key communicator program for each school by providing a stipend, immediate, a stipend position, immediate training for school level staff. Again, this is a staff person already in the schools, already working, um, and adding to that person's uh, regular job responsibility, um, a responsibility to push up the good news, to mine the good news at that school site, and push that into the uh, PR departments office um, for use through in, in distri distribution in social media, in the local news media, through news releases, um, in a lot of different ways. Um, and many school districts do use this kind of system, um, and uh, it really is successful. We also recommend, of course, continuing to examine your equity issues um, and helping the community understand them even more deeply um, based on our focus group uh, comments that we heard. Uh, you might want to consider supporting strategies such as writing opinion editorials, doing uh, presentations, hosting community conversations, and making it more visible on the division website and in, in an internal and external newsletter. Uh, we also had a recommendation around your strategic plan. We know that you're in the process of uh, moving forward with a strategic plan. Um, and we um, we know that school systems, many school systems, um, really uh, gather a lot of energy around their plan and brand it and create an identity for it and uh, develop some key messages around it. Um, and that really helps uh, people to understand what the plan is about and they can see themselves in the plan when it's more uh, visible and um, more relatable. And you might want to consider videos of teacher work in the classroom. Um, and of course, continuing to tie your school board agenda items to the strategic plan goals as you already do. Um, lots of ideas around how to do that in this document. Um, and then we also want to recommend expanding the ongoing customer service training program to all staff. Um, it's very important. Uh, for teachers especially to receive this training as well because we saw a mixed bag of responses on this uh, customer service question on the survey. Um, and on the employee survey in particular, there was low satisfaction on communication that helps them deliver effective customer service. And in, in, in looking at the survey, about 68% of your respondents, employee respondents, were teachers or teacher aides. And so that, um, that's kind of an aha uh, for us that um, you need to, to continue to train your frontline staff but expand it to all staff. We also want to uh, recommend um, committing to trans improving transparency by, transparency by communicating more frequently and holistically on issues such as redistricting and finance which interestingly were ranked very low in the scope survey results um, in terms of uh, communication um, and satisfaction around those topics um, by all three groups, parents, employees, and community. So um, we have a lot of ideas about how to um, elevate the information on redistricting as well as finance um, and really create a web page that are really uh, is like a go-to source, kind of the hub for all the information related to both redistricting and uh, finance. Um, then we want, we would recommend refreshing the current communication tools and consider implementations of new ones. Um, and we have some um, recommendations around improving the website, 
Um, and um, one of the things that districts have used in the past um, very successfully is having just a user group sit down of your, of your um, community, your parents, your, your employees, and ask them to find something on the website and then observe how they do that and what difficulty they have in finding it. Um, and that is um, a really powerful exercise to, um, to help us understand um, how to refine the website to find, um, to make it more user friendly. Um, as, and we also strongly feel that there should be a division level external newsletter targeted toward families and uh, distributed via email. We felt that that was a great need um, because families indicated a desire for more and better information from the school division. Here's a, um, an, a recommendation I think that you'll probably agree with is providing school board members with additional tools to help you in your advocacy efforts. So. Um, you, we know that you're really knowledgeable about a lot that goes on in the school district, but sometimes you're asked to drill down by your community on certain topics, and so we recommend that a, a school board member toolbox be developed that would include fact sheets, PowerPoint presentations on uh, important topics such as budget, redistricting, strategic plan, equity, etc. cetera. Um, so you have something in hand to refer to when you get questions that, are, um, that need a little deeper explanation. And then finally, um, this all, you know, these recommendations, uh, as I said, are really intended to be over the course of the next three years, but we also felt strongly that there needs to be an addition of another position to the department um, to really ensure that these recommendations are, um, are realized. And for that, we, we recommended a new journalist position, uh, someone who could assume primary responsibility for two, two, of the, two newsletters, the one internal, one external, and coordinator of the school-based key communicator program. So that um, is, is our audit report in, um, in a nutshell. I'm glad I didn't have, I had more than three minutes to do that. <laughs> and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Ms. Hunter. Does anyone have any questions? I do. Young? Okay, I'm looking at your uh, list of recommendations here. Thank you very much for doing this. This has been a uh, key in interest to our school board. Um, what would be your top three for this year? I, I think number one would be develop a highly structured internal communications yes. program. What would be the other two that you would recommend for our school division? Well, you know, I, I have to say these aren't in any particular order, um, and some of these um, are going to be uh, resource-based, uh, meaning that uh, you're going to have some need some additional resources uh, to achieve these. Um, definitely two-way communication is very critical um, and strategies uh, to regularly inform and engage community members. Um, definitely those, those would be the top two. Um, and, and customer service, I think, and that ties uh, both the timeliness of the division and school level responses to customer service as well. It's really critical that um, that your audiences feel that they're going to be warmly welcomed when they walk into schools, that they're going to be, uh, whether they want to come in to be a volunteer or they're a, a mom coming in to have lunch with their, their child. You want to make sure that um, everyone, no matter what school they go into, have the same consistent experience. And what we saw was some schools do it really well, some schools need some extra help in training, and um, there should be a consistent ex customer experience no matter what school they walk into. So that would be a, a top one as well. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, I... I have a, a couple of things. One of them really um, involves a little bit about the. Um, I, I notice that you lump staff to everybody. Teachers, janitors, custodians, <clears throat> principals. Um, are those parsed out? Uh, yes, we have provided um, data, uh, the raw data, to the district, and so you can slice and dice that data any way you want. You can just pull out teachers, you can pull out administrative assistants, principals, um, any way you'd like it. Um, yes. I guess the thing that struck me, I looked at the recommendations and I saw the word teacher once, and I, and I looked at some of the other 
um, things, um, some of the other parts here. So I'm not that lost, and, and um, I know uh, prior to coming on the board myself, there were um, significant issues. In, by um, teachers in all the schools. And I'm curious if that um, bubbled up in your focus groups or in the surveys or um, what have you. Particular issues? Sorry? I'm sorry. I'm, I don't think I understand your question fully. Um, particular issues that bubbled up from teachers? Yeah, yeah from when, when you were doing your focus groups. You know, I, I, so you had a focus group with staff. Uh, within the, that context, okay. So it, um, concerns were concerns raised uh, by teachers. Uh, we uh, actually had a, a focus group of teachers. Yes, teachers um, by themselves, and so um, we were able to really drill down and hear teacher comments. And I have to say, the focus group feedback, uh, the raw notes are contained in the report. So you can go back and read every comment that a teacher made within that group so to get a, a really good sense of um, their comments and their answers to our questions. Mr. Kelly? Madam Chair, Ms. Hunter, I appreciate uh, all this information. It's an awful lot to absorb real, it is. real quickly. So we're, we're, we're trying, to, trying to get through that. Um, there are just a, a, several of, the, of your comments talked about um, really additional staffing in the communications, whether it's from, uh, actually I saw one, one full-time staff member. Um, when you start talking about the stipends in each school, that's uh, a more, a really a, an addition to the staff of the communications department. And I, I really think the, uh, the staff members is a, a very interesting idea because it, uh, you know, it helps to feed the information back, gets the school and the, and the faculty on the school engaged in what is uh, going on in the school and what they are actually out there communicating. Um, having been through all three levels, I find that the, the I get a lot of information from the high schools and not as much, I get a little bit of information from the elementary two schools, not as much from the middle schools. And so it kind of, it kind of varies by level as far as how much communication. Sometimes the high school is an awful lot, but um, one of the other concerns I have, um, you know, I've, in my focus group with you, I was like, what, are, what should my expectations be of um, the communications department? Because it's, it's one of those things that you can never do perfect. And, um, you know, everybody, we can do better, we can do better. But, but from the funding level that, I provoke, that we as a school board provide to the communications department, what should our expectations be? And so... Um, some of what you're saying here is that we should we need to we need to invest more in that so that we can get more out of that. Um, so that, that's just an interesting point. Um, the other concern I have too is that we ask a lot of our teachers, um, and um, so now we want our teachers to update their web pages, and um, you know we give the elementary teachers the parent view, and but they don't really have grades, and it's it's. Um, I'm just concerned about how much, but here's another thing that we're going to add on top of our teachers to get them to do more. And we ask a lot of our teachers, and so it's, it's, it's an interesting balance that we have to strike there um, as we do that. So uh, like I said, there's, a, there's an awful lot, awful lot in here. I do, I do agree with the internal communication and, and you know, internal newsletter, and I think that would be a good thing. And I also appreciate your comments that not all 11 of these have to be done next week. That we have to have a change management program. We have to really approach it in a very uh, sober and structured manner. So all those, all those I thought were really good points. So thank you much. Ms. Um, thank you for coming here tonight and giving this presentation. Uh, I was really intrigued by the customer service approach because um, it's something I've noticed is different. There's like a different feel sometimes from one school yeah. to another school. And I think it's kind of a top-down uh, approach. Uh, so in getting everybody on the same page with kind of a customer-friendly environment, 
How do you see that working? Do you see school systems hiring a kind of a someone that comes in with a program that they're how, how have you seen that work? Well, certainly school divisions do it a number of different ways. One, they um, use internal resources, internal staff to um, do training. Um, and other districts have hired out consultants who are um, experts in customer service. One of the things I would recommend um, is uh, many districts have used a mystery shopper service, which a mystery shopper service, which means um, there are uh, people who go into schools and rate the school on a rubric um, from location to uh, to phone call to email, um, and it's not for a gotcha. It's to then we take that information and target the training. So what are the strengths that we see in customer service, and what are those areas that really need to be worked on? It's not a gotcha at all, and we never reveal, uh, I work with a company who does this, we never reveal what, who, what the schools were, who the, who the people were involved. Um, it's just to gather some research so training can be targeted um, it, so it's really useful and it's really effective. Um, and then the other thing that came to mind, my, my, I was also concerned with the stipends. Um, in my mind, the key communicator in every school is the principal. Uh, that's just, the principal knows the good things that are happening and the principal, uh, uh, the principal is the one that needs to make sure that's pushed out to, to the rest of the world. And so, um, although I can, I can see the actual, I guess, work of getting it out might be delegated to someone else, but the buck stops with the principal as far as being the key communicator to me. Um, I, I think that would be just a challenge, I guess, in what is the responsibility and role of a principal. And to me, one of the key responsibilities is being the key communicator for the school. I just wanted to voice my appreciation for all of your work on this. I'm especially appreciative of all the recommendations that you provided, and I look forward to see how we're going to implement them in the coming years. Um, I'm especially appreciative of the um, recommendation to provide myself and my colleagues with additional tools to help us with our advocacy efforts, because there are so many great things happening. Um, and if we could be able to share those more succinctly, um, that would be great. Add, Dr. Heron. Just like to thank Ms. Hunter uh, for the excellent job that she's done. Uh, feedback is always interesting. You you don't know what's happening until you go out and ask your community and your staff and everyone what exactly is happening and what can we do better. Uh, and there is there are a lot of recommendations, but I really do feel that we can start to hone in on taking some things and doing them well. And, and working specifically on internal communications, first of all. So I'm excited about the information. Some good, some lots of opportunities, but I think it's an exciting place to be because we've been provided very good direction on what we can do better. I'd like to echo, um, thanks, Ms. Hunter. Uh, thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for your presentation and for the, the report. I have to say that, uh, for me, it, it, uh, every page resonated. Um, I, it, it rang true. I think that we do a very good job of communicating here. I think we do have a lot of strengths, but we have a, a workforce um, and a community with a high level of educational attainment, high level of expectations. And so um, when we benchmark ourselves against others, it seems that we may want to turn it up a notch to make sure we're, we're um, satisfying that appetite um, because people do want to be engaged and they want to, um, they want to feel as if they're partners with uh, whether they're our employees or citizens or, or parents. So um, I, I agree with all the recommendations, in particular um, three uh, I, I thought were wonderful. I really uh, like the idea of kind of an annual state of the schools. I think that's something that we really need to do and, um, and to uh, provide a regular update to the community. Um, I, I do like um, 
the, the stipend idea, I, I understand that there are obviously financial concerns, but I think that um, you know stipends are an effective tool to bring in more you know ambassadors to the cause, if you Absolutely. will. Um, and then another, uh, I don't think you mentioned it in your presentation, but it was in the report, just the idea of attending community meetings, key staff doing that. Um, I, I, I heard the excitement for Dr. Heron, and I share that excitement, but, and Dr. Heron is wonderful, but central office is filled with amazing, wonderful, talented people. And I think the more they get out into the community, the more people will realize what a high quality organization we are. And I think that's a key point to our, to our uh, communication efforts. So I, I particularly appreciated that. Absolutely. So um, anyway, does anyone else have any other comments before we move on? Well, thank you very much, thank Ms. You Hunter. So much. appreciate it. Okay, that brings us to 9.02, the standard operating procedure. Um, so we discussed this uh, briefly at our work session earlier this month, and in the intervening uh, period, we identified um, so that the uh, disclaimer at the end of our email should probably be reviewed um, so we can go through legal and IT. And so I was hoping that we, that I could get everyone's kind of consensus to kick that back through policy committee to focus just on that piece and agree on some language in cooperation with Mr. Landers and, and the attorneys to set and make sure we're, make that happen, Ms. Serza and Dr. Heron, that would be. That brings us to 10.0. Uh, one board members' comments and requests. Uh, Mrs. Young, do you have anything? Um, I just wanted to thank um, the board for uh, participation in the uh, August 1st meeting. That was a new experience for me, um, sitting in a room with voices. And they, they weren't all in my head for a change, which was pretty awesome. Uh, so I, and I appreciate uh, the uh, communication um, and IT people for making that possible because that was, um, I, I did not want to do that with three little scrambling grandchildren, so being able to, to hear it and everything, I do appreciate that. Thank you very much for that. Um, and I'm just excited about a new school year and I'm looking forward to it. And I want to thank uh, staff for all the preparations I know that you're busy making. I saw some smiles there, <laughs> so, uh, and I'm sure a little bit of trepidation too, but thank you very much. Yeah, I'd like to um, applaud so many of the schools who have received these uh, awards on the state level, the performance awards, excellence awards, distinguished achievement awards, as I've said um, many times in the past, this is a high quality school district and people outside of Williamsburg recognize that on a, on a regular basis and um, I want to make sure we don't forget about that. Um, I appreciate the, um, the challenge of recycling. And, um, and, and I do agree that um, children can get their parents to be much more responsive <laughs> to recycling than the parents do. And, I, and the schools are a good place for, for that to start. So I, I hope um, um, there's a way to have that be done more systematically. And uh, I, I applaud your efforts in, uh, in that direction. Um, I also um, want to acknowledge um, that the information gathered from the survey um, is going to be extremely valuable, very important. Um, and I do look forward to parsing some of it out. <laughs> but, um, um, and I think the recommendations are, um, are right on the target. And, uh, and it's going to, and, and everybody's going to be involved in it. And that's the most important thing. Mr. Kelly? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, actually, if having participated electronically before, if you use a headphone, the voices actually are in your head. <laughs> so, um, I would also like to add my uh, uh, thoughts and prayers to Mrs. Owenby as she uh, as she struggles through the loss of her mother. I know that's a very tough thing for her, and I uh, um, I know she has uh, struggled with that for a long time. I'd also like to um, to acknowledge uh, the progress of Juan Spence, our War Hill student. Um, who was recently f featured in the paper, um, making what uh, most medical experts say is a miraculous recovery. So I just want to um, congratulate him and know that he's still in our thoughts and our prayers as he goes through the struggle. And uh, we all look forward to seeing him on graduation day. So uh, um, appreciate the good work there. On August 2nd, um, Mrs. Cook and I uh, 
uh, participated in the summer completers graduation ceremony at Lafayette. Uh, Mrs. Omi was going to was going to be there, but couldn't make it. Um, it was a, it was really great to see those students that uh, um, went through the summer program and got and got uh, finished their graduation and got their diploma and, and their and uh, moving on in the to the next school year. So I I uh, really enjoyed that. So that uh, you know the next time we meet is the first day of school. So thank you, Mr. Kelly, Ms. Hummel. So last year, I uh, enjoyed going to the convocation and watching uh, our interim superintendent. And I'm very much looking forward to our permanent uh, superintendent. And it's, it's really nice, and I think the communications audit report brought this up, that there is this sense of enthusiasm and an improvement in morale that and and I think um, it's due to what you've done so far, and I'm looking forward to what the new year brings. Permanent, you said. Permanent. <laughs> Permanent. You you Are told you? us you were going to stay here until you retired. <laughs> Mrs. Taylor. Um, as always, I'm very appreciative of our community members who come out to speak. Um, it's so important that you're engaging with us. I think it helps us do our job a little better. So. Very much appreciate that as always. Thank you. Um, yeah, I would like to uh, echo Dr. Beers' congratulations to everyone who made uh, the state um, awards possible. That uh, takes a, the work of a, of a lot of people, and, uh, and we have very little to do with that, so thank you. Um, I want to just let everyone, I want to thank the Kiwanis Club of Williamsburg. I had the opportunity to speak at a luncheon meeting um, earlier this month, and that was a, a delightful experience. I got a lot of questions, but most of them were positive. Did you need a tool? I did, uh, actually, Ms. Overcamp-Smith made a wonderful PowerPoint. Thank you. It was very well received. Uh, I, got, I got compliments on it, so thank you. Um, I also uh, like the idea of um, embracing recycling, so I hope that we can uh, do that and, and support that effort. Look forward to learning more about our SOL results in October. Uh, be prepared for a lot of questions, I think. Always. Um, and yeah, summer graduation is the best. Um, that's, a, that's a wonderfully small, intimate, um, but very special ceremony. So anyway, that was good. Anything, any other comments before we move on? That brings us to 11.01 .01 upcoming events on the 16th of this month. That's tomorrow, right? Um, at 4 o'clock, the policy committee meets in the uh, school board annex in James Blair. Uh, on the 25th of August, we have a convocation, which Ms. Hummel mentioned, and that's at 8 a.m. in the Williamsburg Community Chapel. And then on the uh, 11th of September, there is a briefing for school board candidates, and that is um, at 2.30 p.m. in room 203 of the school board central office in James Blair. And then our upcoming meetings on the, on the first day of school, on September 5th at 6 p.m. in James Blair, we have a closed session followed by a work session at 6.30, also in James Blair. And then on the 19th of September, we have a closed session at 6 p.m. here at Stryker Center and followed by a regular meeting at 6.30, also in the Stryker Center. Uh, with that, the meeting is adjourned. <laughs>